Hello and welcome to our daily devotions from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. We're so glad that you're watching these. Today we're going to continue our look at the small catechism. Uh, we've been doing that before the time of Christmas. We're going to pick it up again today. Today we're going to focus on the second petition from the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come. What does this mean? The kingdom of God certainly comes by itself without our prayer. But we pray in this petition that it may come to us also. How does God's kingdom come? God's kingdom comes when our Heavenly Father gives us His Holy Spirit, so that by His grace we believe His Holy Word and lead godly lives here in time and there in eternity. Thus far our text. How does God's kingdom come to you? It's a fancy way of asking, how are you made Christian? You're made Christian not by your own work, but instead by the work of the Holy Spirit. So how do you get the Holy Spirit? Well, he's not just floating around there randomly, like you have to chase him with a butterfly net or something, or you have to ask him to come and invade your heart and make you a Christian. Rather, God's Holy Spirit is always attached to the Word. Wherever the Word is, the Holy Spirit is there, working faith in you, calling you to repentance, and making you into a Christian. This has huge implications because it tells us how we can find God. God's Holy Spirit is attached to the Word, and the Word is attached to water. So that in the waters of holy baptism, God is coming to make you a Christian. He's coming to save you. God's word is attached to bread and wine. And therefore, God's Holy Spirit is present in the Lord's Supper, delivering to you the very body and blood of Jesus, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. God's word is preached and read and sung here in the divine service. And so the Holy Spirit comes to you through those means, calling, gathering, enlightening, and sanctifying you to be a Christian. And in all of these ways, where God's word is present, God's kingdom comes to you. Or rather, you are made a citizen of God's kingdom. That has important implications for your life. It means you're not just a citizen of the United States. You're not just a human being who lives a mere 60, 70, 80 years and then dies and it's all over. God's kingdom is eternal. God's kingdom has no end. You are a citizen of that kingdom, and therefore you will have no end either. Where God's kingdom is, you shall be world without end. Another interesting fact of God's kingdom is that all of its citizens are holy, set apart, made well by the work of Jesus Christ. This too is important for you because here on earth you have sin. You've done what's wrong. You've ignored God's word. You've rejected at times God's Holy Spirit. You've focused instead on what you want, how you want it, when you want it. You've listened to the voices of this world which do not want you to believe in God. But instead, you have fallen time and time again. That's why God sends His Holy Spirit in the Word to you. That's why God makes you a part of His kingdom, so that through the work of Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, your sins might be forgiven. You would be made holy. You would be given the promise of eternal life with God in His kingdom. You would be able to feast on the food of heaven. You would be dressed in the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all of your sin. You will inherit eternity in God's kingdom. Because the Holy Spirit has come to you and brought you the forgiveness earned by Jesus Christ, crucified and risen for you, for your sins. Your friends in Christ, God's kingdom comes to you today. 
here at church. Come and receive that gift. Come and rejoice in God's blessings. In his holy name, amen. Christian Church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To, ra to, to raise those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good to give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage, and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, 
and graciously to hear our prayer. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, according to our sins. Do not reward us according to our iniquities. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but rather that we should turn from our evil ways and live. Graciously spare us those punishments which we by our sins have deserved, and grant us always to serve you in holiness and pureness of living. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.